G'day, welcome back to the channel. I want to talk about this news story here. Hack allows drone takeover via Express LRS protocol. Now this is it's a bit of a scare story. It's on threat post. And basically what they're saying is that the ELRS, ELRS system, Express LRS, is vulnerable to a, a takeover, a hack, which could enable a third party to take control of your drone or your model if you're using ELRS as the RF protocol. Um, interesting, but not necessarily that relevant. This has been an issue in other protocols. I think one of the reasons that FreeSky decided to go with their new system was because they said the old system was vulnerable. In fact, any 2.4 system is vulnerable to a degree. You can encrypt the data stream if you want to, but it's an extra layer that adds a little bit of latency. In the old days when we flew long wire, well, all you had to do was turn on another transmitter on the same frequency and you could shoot a plane down, shoot a model down. So this has the potential, yes, to to enable someone to take control of your model. But the reality is it's not just a simple task. You have to decrypt the the hash code that's used for the, the, the headers and the radio packets. It's 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 a little bit more complicated than you might think. Um, and as I say, this is not the first time we've seen a RF protocol come in for this kind of attention. I think, was it Spectrum or was it DJI? I forget. Anyway, it was a while ago someone did, did a, a sort of an expose. But uh, we don't see this happening. I don't think there's much value in anyone doing this because why would you? And if you're going to use a drone for real covert operation, you're not going to use a consumer grade, probably not an open source RF protocol. So yeah, this is uh, someone looking for a story to write. Um, they do talk about how it could be beefed up and maybe the guys at Express LRS will beef it up if they feel it's important. But I'm not going to lose any sleep over this, to be honest. Totally not going to lose any sleep. And I find it interesting. This is typical of the kind of crap journalism you get. Um, this is a Mavic 2. Well, Mavic 3, I can't quite read. Mavic 2. Um, they don't use Express LRS. So why have they got these drones in the picture for the story? Obviously, the people who are writing this really don't know what they're talking about to any great extent. So I wouldn't worry yourself. wouldn't get your panties in a bunch over this. Um, yeah, but there is some really, really interesting changes in Express LRS version 3. I'm going to be covering those in an upcoming video because I was about to drop a video that said Express LRS isn't really good for everybody. But I may have to change my mind because the guys at Express LRS are doing some amazing things. They're actually implementing some of the things that I was going to suggest as a must have, as an essential addition to the protocol. So I'm going to be doing some deep diving in Express LRS 3 over the next few days, next week or so. And then I'll be bringing out my video on Express LRS. And I think it's going to be very positive. I'm a great fan of open source projects, whether it be flight controllers or RF links or the, the software that drives our transmitter like OpenTX, EdgeTX. They're all fantastic for the hobby. I'm just waiting. I know there's the OpenHD, I think it is, the digital FPV system, but it's kind of kludgy built on Raspberry Pis and other bits and pieces in, in the most part. I'm hoping that um, Carl from um, HD0 follows through with his commitment to open source key parts of that system because that would give the community ownership of a digital FPV system and it would basically mean the sky's the limit in terms of em enhancing that product, improving that product. Given that there are some hardware limitations, there's no really uh, effective onboard compression and it's a one-way system, but I still think there is plenty of potential for open uh, for, for an open digital FPV standard based on off-the-shelf hardware. Remember, OpenHD, yeah, it's kind of, you got to build the bits yourself, got to put them together. It's not like you can buy a ready-to-use piece of hardware and it has open source software for digital FPV. That's not happening, but hopefully it will happen. Anyway, so there you go. This this um, this story is, if you read this, don't get worried. You're not going to have your drone flying off because someone's discovered an easy hack. Um, this this is a, a vulnerability on a lot of radio protocols. If you're running the original Fresco ACCST, you get the same problem, but nobody really worries about it. Um, so yeah, if you've got any comments, questions, stick them down below in the down belowy bit. And I will uh, attempt to address those. In the meantime, um, watch out for my video on Express LRS. Now, I see there's been a few videos up already. I think it was at Painless 360's done quite a good video on version 3 Express LRS. Go and have a look at that if you're interested. I'll give you my spin on that in a week or so's time. In the meantime, thank you for watching RC Model Reviews. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. And I return you to your normal programming.